It's May 8 in Garden Zone 5 and it's still early to plant. I'm getting a little itchy with garden fever, so I'm going to go out and inspect the gardens. Every year, birds make a nest up there. I can hear the little babies. We used to have little house sparrows over there, but now these birds have taken over. So the bird is called a European starling. It's interesting because in Europe, winter roosts, where these birds go, can reach over one million birds. In Israel, there was a reported five to eight million birds in one single roost. That's really crowded. What I discovered is that there's European starlings and there's European grackles. They will destroy the nests of other birds from time to time. That's not a good thing because typically it causes a decline on the native birds in the area. We used to have a lot of, uh, what do you call them? What are they called? I just said them in the video. House sparrow. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. I thought, and I still do, that had something to do with the the disappearance of the structures that were also part of making the house sparrows feel really safe because they're that little tiny brown bird that you'll see in the videos sort of meandering on the, the driveway where the seat, the bird seat is. We used to have an arbor and a big salsa garden in the front and they used to hide out in the canopy over the arbor and th in the arbor. That's what house sparrows like to do. There are going to be that little bird that when you walk by a shrub you just hear like about a hundred of them just chirping, right? They just sound so beautiful. So they like a nice private secluded and if you look at my front lawn in the garden these days, it's pretty wide open. So the bird bath is also gone. That was something that they really need. They love to live with humans, providing you pro provide them with the safety and the security that they need. That little place as a nest was perfect for them because as soon as they'd come out, the bird bath and the bird feeder was right there at the edge of the garden, just on the lawns. Actually, at one point, it was right in that little front garden. Yeah, over the years, they just kept multiplying here, but because those structures were taken out, the grackles and the starlings and the crows, I mean, we have everything here, uh, cardinals, blue jays, crows, we have a hawk, it occasionally comes by and lands. I mean, it's kind of interesting. Oh my gosh, I had a little finch literally just perch on the side of my body and stare at me while I was out there with the garden hose watering. They, and they know, they know who you are in the garden. They, they know that you're safe and that you're there to protect them and help them. Now, can they communicate that to you? No, but in their own way, they do. Like the little bird, the finch that landed on me, like on this side and then on this side. <laughs> One side would have been a coincidence going over to the other side. That was more than a coincidence. And then landing on the thing right in front of me, the railing, like, and looking at me. He, at that point, it's no longer a coincidence. So it's interesting because the structures are gone and the house sparrows are still here. There's a small group of them because my neighbor just down the street has a bird bath and he feeds the birds and there's so many people here that do. So they're in the area and they know that this is a good, it's like the squirrels, they know that this is a good place to get, it's a steady place to get food, right? It's like your steady grocery store chain for nature. <laughs> Going back to the little starling today, they have strong jaws, which is used to pierce their beaks into the soil for insects and they will occasionally also catch flies in the air. So mostly you'll see starlings foraging on short lawns and fields in urban areas. And yeah, they, that's how they first were attracted here. They came to the lawn because, you know, on the lawn itself, because we had tilled, actually I removed all the earth and put new soil in is what I did. So that brought them in. And then, you know, there's a good water supply here and other things, like I said, even the nesting place. So they just decided to take over because the house sparrows were moving away, but they kind of already knew because we had originally first dug that front garden, that's how they first knew that there were nests available. They were scouting the air. During non-breeding, starlings explore different habitats like salt marshes, orchards, refuse dumps, moorland, and tidal flats. A lot of flying insects, whether they're flies or they're dragonflies or whatever. So it makes sense why they are there. They're definitely carnivores. And the interesting thing is it works with the little house sparrows because the house sparrows are seed eaters. So they can live together with humans and not compete. So the European starling is also known as the common starling. So I'll show you a picture via birdfact.com. That's a grackle. We have those too, but that's not what's living there. This is the one we have. It's speckled. Isn't it pretty? They're just like crows and ravens. 
the grackles and the European starling have the ability to recognize and remember individual faces of human beings. And they can even mimic the sounds of other birds and occasionally even humans. Kind of interesting, right? Intelligent birds moved into this building. Now that's obviously the male. This is the one who came and greeted me on the balcony as if to say, oh, so this is your nest. Because I see you and I know where the other people lived. I'm a bird, nobody cares, so I stalked them. <laughs> and figured out where they lived and now I'm figuring out where you live. It's just a nest. I have a big nest to compare to that bird. Uh, my nest is a little different. Knowing that they take apart other people's nests, I might not want to leave that door open because they can rip things apart with their bills. So they're intelligent and they communicate in their own way to us, but it's up to you to learn their language. I mean, obviously they're intelligent enough that they're learning ours. So out of the two of us, if we're not communicating with them, but they're learning how to communicate with us and we think it's just a dumb bird, it might make you want to rethink that, right? When did you last go out and try to learn bird? And that, my friends, that's bird speak today. See all that brown? I put down new dirt and instead of planting grass, I have a kilogram bag of white clover that I think I might sprinkle through there instead. That will provide a low growing ground cover as well as a pretty small white flower. So it'll add a little bit of interest, it'll protect the soil from drying out and clover seeds grow a little better than grass, at least for me. I'm growing lettuce in here. It's a little miniature greenhouse from a container that I bought food in from Superstore a couple years ago. And I saved it because I knew that I would use it for this purpose. So I have lettuce growing in here and I have mint growing in here, two different types of mint. I have mojito mint. I don't remember the second one. Somewhere in here I have a strawberry plant growing. The idea is to plant mint and strawberries through here. I have strawberries growing here and here as well. Oh, somebody needs watering. This is a flowering plant. I can't remember what it is. I think it's kind of like an echinacea. I still have a little bit of rainwater saved in here with some greens from the garden that I threw in there to fertilize the soil. I'm revising my gardening strategies to do what I can with the space that I have. So I've decided I'm gonna to have to garden differently. I'm going to have to start my seedlings here because seedlings are really expensive these days. $30 for a strawberry plant, unheard of. I think I paid maybe $4 for my strawberries like five years ago. They're everlasting, so they grow year after year. So yeah, just changing the way that I garden. These are the two pawpaws. The other two, I had four pawpaws in here, two died, and I have two remaining, so I'm really happy about that. I have to separate these and put them in their own pots. This is a Saskatoon berry. This is red creeping thyme. It looks like a lot of it has died from stress, but some of it's still alive. I have some mint planted in here. This is a Borealis honeyberry tree. It will grow four to six feet tall. I already put it in a different pot, so this will be okay in this pot for this year, but it'll have to be transplanted either into a five gallon bucket like this or in the larger container like this next year. I bought this last year, so that was a pretty good price, $14.99. I don't even know what that costs today. This is my compost. I have red wiggler earthworms in there. So how I compost is I have this little bucket under my sink here. I simply put my food scraps in here. That's eggshells, cucumber peels, banana peels, coffee grinds, and I don't normally eat the peel from store-bought apples, so I compost it instead. And then once this gets reasonably full, then I take it out to the blue bin that I showed you outside. Because this has a secure lid, it doesn't emit any odor. This is dwarf rootstock. I have three Macintosh apples here, and I'm hoping that once they grow, I can take one of these and graft it onto this stalk. I've never done this before, but I'm willing to try. It's about 2.20 right now uh, in the middle of the afternoon. It's way too hot to plant, so I'll either do that late tonight or I'll wake up super early and do it. But I'll show you the cucumbers that I have. I bought three different types of slicing cucumbers. These are Bush Champion, and there's two in each, so I have four of those. And I have four of these slicing. These are like an English cucumber. And then I bought pickling cucumbers. I will ferment these because one thing that I miss is having fermented pickles. And I'll just grow those along the fence 
I'll space them out and then that way they can be supported and then grow up along the fence. This is yellow bed straw. This literally gets yellow flowers and this will all turn yellow and then I have wild yarrow which is white and some um, wild asters which are purple and yellow. And then here I have more yarrow. I believe this is, I believe this turns yellow. I can't remember if this turns yellow or white. And I still don't know what that flower is. I, I suspect it's some type of valerian that I planted. My orange ornamental poppies are blooming. This is black hollyhock. It's just starting to get some flower buds. Oh, look at that, blackberries. Oh, I've got a whole mass of flowers down here. This is an arm that I'm gonna have to find a way to prop it up. So it's in bloom. And I have more arnica under here. white ground cover and this is purple. It's kind of all spent at this point. And my lavender is just starting to come up. And my garden is pretty much just purples, yellows, a little bit of white and orange. This is white sage, Greek oregano. And then of course my neighbors have this three beautiful Rosa Sharon that are all purple as well. So it looks really nice together. I didn't do that purposely. It just kind of happened naturally. This is storm cloud. It normally has a beautiful bluish purple color flower. It's spent, but I think I have some footage of it when it was in bloom. And then of course I have the purple clematis growing here. And then this whole front garden is purple and white with the exception of the tiger lilies, which are orange. So purple, yellow, and white with a hint of orange are the predominant colors of my garden. Look at all the bumblebees. This is a miniature yellow rose bush. And my clematis growing up through the arbor. And on the other side of the arbor, I planted my valiant grapes. I have two tomato plants growing here. I had three, but the squirrels dug one up. I have a blueberry bush there. I've been finding these everywhere. These are from last year, so. I have two in the garden, I'm going to put this one in as well. I've been finding them in the cracks of the patio slabs, believe it or not. <laughs> That's not going to be good if you've got 12-foot marijuana plants growing everywhere. 
and there's another one growing. So I'm just digging these up and planting them in my front garden because I can grow four. So this is my fourth one. Menacing plumes and relentless flames. So far, Canada's worst spring wildfire season to date. Oh no, are you okay? Oh, how are the chemicals affecting you, little guy? Oh, you okay? No, you seem to be struggling. I think I have daisies or some sort of white flower. Oh, it is daisies. It's wild chamomile. I have this growing up on the balcony. <laughs> oh, look at the clover. It's growing really well. That's going to be an interesting mix when it's done. There's a nice big bush there that I transplanted from the back of that chamomile. Oh my goodness. This is not living at all. Huh. Uh-oh, my cucumber's not looking good either. What's going on here? I don't like it when this happens. Hmm. That's not good when leaves happen like that. What's going on with my cucumber plant? And what is going on with this tomato plant? It's like everywhere, but in the... Oh, it's too heavy for the cage. It needs to be staked. Hmm. Imagine that, I have a stake right here. It's almost as if Dom knew I was going to need it. I got excited about that cucumber and was about to step right on the spinach. So I'm kind of glad I waited. Mm, I'm so happy for cucumber season. I don't think she's liking all this direct sunlight. It's time to put her back in the shade. I don't think that Dom and I have been remembering out here but it's all good I have lots of rainwater for now and I guess he reduced another bag or so maybe let's go find out well wow, that's premium dirt right there folks <laughs> so is that oh my god he cut back all the grapes my neighbor is gonna freak oh dear and the reason being is because she's Lebanese and she takes the leaves, the biggest leaves, and she wraps. You know how we do cabbage rolls? They do it with grape leaves. Maybe I could give her my horse radish leaves. I don't know. Make it up to her. This is going to be all taken apart, but hopefully not until later this summer. The longer I can get this to fall, the better, because that gives the roots time to grow. I didn't even see this. Getting lots of water, so Dom is on it. Thank God, because I'm not. This is a clematis. You can see the flowers are all spent, but it's getting new flowers. It usually it grows low first, and then the second bloom is up higher. It's quite lovely. It double blooms through the year. came out and cut this entire lawn with a pair of scissors. <laughs> I don't mind doing it because the landlord cuts it far too short. What do you think of my little fence? I mean, I wanted to build a rustic little fence and isn't it rustic? <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. First fence I've ever created, I've ever built. I just told Dom it probably won't be the last. And now I'm going to finish this edging on this lawn and put some pieces of wood in here just to make it look pretty. So 
there's my little fence. And now I just have to finish the edging along here and this will allow this wooden edger to be visible and to be clean so that when the grass is cut it's easier to manage all these plants aren't falling over. serves me correctly. Yeah, I need to fasten this one. So not only did I hand cut the lawn with scissors, I came around here and trimmed because there's a gentleman that cuts this lawn next door and over there. And even though this is this property, he still does this. I don't know why. Anyway, I decided because he's knocked these around a few times. Not his fault. I'm the one that created the garden. But I decided to put these little wooden pegs just to hold the logs in in case he does bump it. He's an older gentleman. So, you know, he's a great guy. He cuts the lawn, does an amazing job. But, uh, you know, and I created this, which was a bit of an inconvenience for him. So I thought, well, I'll just trim all this with the scissors and knock those in to hold it in place, those little pegs. And that way, if he does hit it with the lawnmower, it's not a big deal. So I think... This garden is officially done. One of my neighbors just came over and asked me where my watermelons are. <laughs> She's used to me growing watermelons. Not this year. <laughs> You'll remember I had a tomato here in a cage that was sickly. I pulled it out and planted some bloody duck. I just have to water that. But I got another one that's sickly, so I don't know, guys. There's something going on. The, there's a lot of mildew, because I think I have fruit on this one, but I just don't know if the plant's gonna live. For the tomatoes to ripen. I'm almost tempted to cut this one out now in case it spreads it to that one. That is called Jude's Victory Dance, because right now I'm feeling pretty proud of myself with my little fence. Now the question is, can I do it on the other side? I can. <laughs> it's Saturday, it's hot, but I'm making bread. It'll get a lot hotter, but weekends are best for me because then I can bake four loaves of bread, two on Saturday and two on Sunday. Then I have bread for the whole week. Walking her baby and the coffee. I'm walking my coffee to the garden. I came out yesterday and cut most of these grapes and made kombucha, second ferment. I prefer wild grapes, but these valiant grapes are pretty close. This is the I don't know, squash, cucumber, zucchini, plant. I don't know, it's something that was growing up on my balcony. No, 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 you're not gonna attack the blueberry. You gotta grow up here with the clematis. Don't be trying to play tricky dicky on me. It's not gonna be ready by harvest time, but at least it can grow. I finally figured out what this plant is. It's um, a primrose. Now this, if I'm not mistaken, this particular primrose can grow as tall as this tomato plant. So clearly this is not the right spot for it. I have an empty spot right there. I could always plant that evening primrose, plant that here for next year. I'm going to remove this motherwort from here because I have a black satin thornless blackberry plant that's not getting sufficient light. It's being crowded. So upon closer inspection of this thornless blackberry, I have two really good canes that can produce fruit next year, the old stuff is dying off, so I'm gonna have to come out here and cut that back. This is Joe Pie Weed. I like the Joe Pie Weed, and I like the motherwort, but they have to be moved. <gasps> oh, look at the four clocks. Wow, this plant is quite pretty, even just as foliage. There's the blueberry that my neighbor gave me. I ripped out the male that was growing there and planted her. I don't know if she's getting enough sunlight there, but I typically think she gets sunlight for about four hours. I think she needs a whole lot more than that. 
And this is the other one. I'm pretty sure this is a male, but uh, I'm going to wait just about maybe another week. If I see little sacks anywhere, I'm going to rip it out. My blackberries this year is just phenomenal. I've already collected quite a few and I still have lots to collect. Sometimes I come out here and just eat them straight off the vine. They're so good. This particular one is a triple crown thornless blackberry. Well, that was a small harvest today, but there's still enough in there for like a breakfast. Lots of tomatoes, but nothing is red yet. It's not as hot as last week, but there's still ample time for these to grow and ripen. Pretty sure that's the closest thing to a tractor that I'll ever see in this city of Toronto. <laughs> Gotta love the Batman song too that he was playing. Priceless. Dom was just bringing up rainwater and I was emptying the barrels and found a bug. Oh, there he is. Isn't he cool? Hello. Who and what are you? I know I'm gonna butcher this word. I'm not gonna butcher it. I'm just gonna let you read it and let you butcher it. It's a uh, cutie Cleopatra to me. Oh, he looks like an alien. Oh, he's so cute. It's a type of centipede. And according to Family Handyman, don't kill them because they're useful. It's a house centipede, which kind of makes sense why it's out at the balcony and why I don't really see these so much in my actual garden. I mean, it's, they might be there. It's just that I see other bugs when I'm looking in the garden. Python. I know, it's like a python in the jungle. That's so cool. These guys have 15 pairs of legs. Thank God you don't have to put shoes on those. They can travel 1.3 feet per second. That's fast. Huh. See, I knew they killed flies, but what I didn't know is they also kill cockroaches and silverfish and moths and termites. Good to know. Makes sense why they're at the rain barrels because they like moisture. So if you have them in your home, you want to make sure you have a dehumidifier to get rid of the moisture that attracts them in. But if you have any of those previous bugs, you might want to hold on to them. I do have a problem with flies in my home. Wait, we have to pause. So it's at this point in the story where I have to interrupt and we have to backtrack to the fly story in order for you to understand the rest of the story. Fly, fly, shoo, 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 shoo. You're not supposed to be in here. We had, we had rules. We had sacred boundaries. That be the time today. Gypsy's about to have something. We don't label her meals anymore. And I am making, well, I've already made the salad. Voila. Oh, are you serious? I just took the towel off and you're back. Seriously, seriously, seriously. Will you please leave the kitchen, dude? Go have fun somewhere else, outside where you belong. Go on. Now I understand my mother with six kids in the house. That's what the fly is to me. It's like a kid in the house and it's like, oh my God, you're in everything. Can you get out of here? Seriously, seriously, you need to groom yourself. Do you wanna see it? It's really quite pretty. It's a really pretty fly. You know, like I have respect. I just don't really like them in my kitchen because flies are harbingers of disease and it makes sense. They lay their eggs in fecal matter. So if they're laying eggs in fecal matter, that means they're on it. And we know what fecal matter on lettuce does, it gives you food poisoning, right? So in a sense, that's what those flies are. But do all flies lay eggs in poop or do some flies lay eggs in poop? See, I need to do research. Who would have thought there's so many flies in the world? This particular fly is called common green bottle fly. I was right. It's a potential threat to human health since these pests transmit diseases like dysentery and seminalosis through food contamination. Symptoms can range from mild cramps to severe diarrhea, vomiting, headache, weakness, and fever. So that little green fly in my house, it's gotta go. Yeah, cat food is sitting out. Gotta put that away. You don't want the flies landing in the cat food and giving her some disease. Things such as decaying animal flesh, 
feces, garbage, and rotting meat are food sources and breeding grounds for these flies. Adult green bottle flies can live upwards to three weeks, and in that time frame, providing that they're not eaten within that three weeks, they can produce upwards to 2,000 eggs in their lifetime. That's a lot of babies in three weeks. And of course, depending on the temperature, those eggs can hatch anywhere from two to 10 days. So what is the connection between flies and something such as a plague? They actually transfer human and animal diseases. Kind of scary if you think about it. I guess that makes sense why so many of us just innately know that flies are icky and we don't want them in our house or anywhere near our food. Okay, so that's the nastiness of the fly. Is there any good to the fly? Apparently there is. Did you know that they're really good pollinators, especially for pawpaw trees and goldenrod? They like flowers with really strong odors. And these are good food sources when all other food sources for this particular fly is diminished. And in fact, pollen is a really good food source to produce healthy eggs. Providing they're kept outside, on one hand, they're good pollinators, but if they come into contact with our food, mm, they can be quite damaging to human health. When it comes to flies on rotting flesh and even garbage, in a sense, they're kind of essential for decomposition because it's the eggs when they turn into larvae that feed off of that decaying matter and help turn it into compost. So there's some good or sweet with some bad or sour. Yeah. I actually have something in common with these flies. We both like fermented milk. How weird is that, right? Where these flies can pose even greater problems, especially to pets that you may have, whether they're household pets or outdoor pets. And especially you'll see this in like feral animals, is that if they have a sore on their body, these flies can land on the animal and lay their eggs on the sore. They'll get uh, worms, what looks like maggots, eating at their flesh, that's because these flies have landed on them and laid eggs. They can even lay eggs in the eyes, nose, and ears of animals. Oh, doesn't that just make you want to cringe? That's gross. So are these flies commonly found in our homes? Not usually. It's usually the black housefly, right? The common housefly, which by the way is equally just as nasty in that it is also a harbinger of disease. So why did this particular fly come into my home? Well, because I have bananas that are ripening, I have fermented foods that are out. These are souring, fermenting, or rotting, in a sense, foods that attract these flies. I have a screen door to my balcony, and I also have a little garden out on my balcony. So I make a liquid green water fertilizer for my plants out on my balcony that's going to attract the flies. I have rich compost soil that I make myself. That's going to attract the flies. And I have to remember that Gypsy's kitty litter is also out on that balcony. That's going to attract the flies. Don't really like the kitty litter, but hey, I love the cat that uses the kitty litter, so I have to accommodate her. I'm back on Google and I want to introduce you to a site called lawnstarter.com, natural fly repellents that actually work. Am I reading that right? Water, vinegar, and salt, that's all I need to combine and set little dishes out and that's going to deter flies? Oh my god, this is so easy. Because I have all these things out in the balcony garden that are actually going to attract these flies, I need to be a little more strategic and look at ways that I can maybe use plants to deter the flies. So things like lavender, rosemary, and peppermint, lemongrass, and catnip, I can grow that on my balcony and that'll help to deter the flies. I can also take cinnamon sticks infused in citronella essential oil and leave that out in the balcony and that will also act as an essential oil type repellent. These are all very doable solutions and they'll add beauty to my garden balcony. Okay, salad made, check, check. Will it fit in the fridge? My mother used to always say, I got two things to say to you. Well, I'm not gonna say that because I don't have two things to say to you, but I do have two containers. <laughs> so if I put that in two containers, <laughs> 
then I can have some for me and some for Dom. Okay, one big salad bowl that won't fit in the fridge. Two containers, problem solved. Me later, Dom later still. I don't know about you, but that's a whole lot of rightness right there. <laughs> oh my God, it's such a dark. Okay, so let me show you the fridge face. Okay, I have to get two salads in here because like everything's full. I have to get two salads in here and I have to get those two big containers of sourdough bread up here. How is that gonna happen? It's not. And I've got boiled eggs down here because, well, I'm still just eating these ones. So typically I'll leave them with the shell on in the fridge until I've devoured these and then I'll deshell them and put them in here. Then I'll boil another batch. Now that said, I could take those and fill up this jar and take some of those eggs and boil them and put them in the bottom drawer. That would give me more space. See, creative thinking. Yeah, but then you're gonna say, but Jude, but Jude, then you only have that many eggs. Oh, but dude, there's just a grocery store up the street. I can buy them anytime. And there's a chicken farmer up the street if I could go there and get them too. So it's okay, it's okay. You know, I can boil these, I can freeze these. I can make egg salad because I've got some salmon salad here and I've got some egg wraps here and I've got some pasta and fish salad here for Dom. So if I just made another little egg salad, in other words, I take all this and it, suddenly it's a container here now and the other ones I boil and I put them down here and these ones I take the shells off and I put them in there. Oh my God, that's critical thinking. That's too much thinking. You think too much. Yeah, but my fridge is organized, so. And then I have space for at least one salad. Oi, get back here. Oh, I need a little. There. And if that's out of there, two breads. Because I'm going to eventually eat this before the bread goes in the fridge tonight, so. I just have a little boiling to do, that's it. How easy was that, right? Problem solved. I don't have to do this right now. As long as I do this before the end of the day. I'm so excited about my first cucumber. I almost don't wanna cut into it. I just, I'm so in love with it. it just feels so nice. It's firm, but kind of prickly. It's like a exfoliator on the skin. <laughs> Because it's got the little prickles, right? But they're not like prickly where it really hurts. But it kind of does feel like, you know, when you need a good back scratch, just go grab a cucumber, right? No, I'm kidding. Don't do this at home, kids. Yeah, I'm just really excited about my first cucumber. So I don't have cucumber in that salad. And I think I'm going to put this in the chiller and I'm going to add this to my salad later. Or I have few cum cucumbers that I could add to this and make a cucumber salad for Dom and me. We like salad and onion salads combine diced or sliced onions with cucumber, a little bit of olive oil, and some salt. It's so good. I think it's an Italian thing. Because it sure didn't ha exist in my household. My household is, well, my household is Irish, Scottish, English, and everything from France all the way up to the tip, and everything in between. And I personally don't recall cucumber and onion with olive oil and salt in our diets. It wasn't part of our food, but I sure like it. So the only people that I know eat like that are the Mediterranean type people. So good to have friends in those places, if you know what I mean. Back to our story. That said, I was looking for all natural alternatives to get rid of those flies. I never considered other insects like this guy. So I think I just made a new friend. That said, I don't think I'm gonna be inviting it into my house for dinner anytime soon. But you know, if you if you want him to come over, I can put him in an envelope and send him to your address. Just drop me a line. I'm kidding. You're the other guy. It looks like spaghetti. It looks like a tape where you mm -hmm. take out of a dog I thought or it was a cat. Lisa, right? or... I, pretty neat. Look at him. He wants your attention. Yeah. Hi. He needs to be on something. That's probably what he's looking Hi. for. I wonder if we should give him a plant to bring him down. Well, let's do it. Would you like to come down off of there? Mm-hmm. Hop on and I'll take you out of here. 
take you out of this den of inequity and into some beautiful garden scenery. Are you on? You're a little spastic. Hold on, I'm gonna pick you up, all right? Hold on. Here we go. Here we As go. You drop, he's over here now, hon. Well, oh, there's an earthworm. Oh my God, look at the earthworms moving. Go, guys, go. You can do it. You can aerate the soil. Don't be shy. Oh, look at you, you're all shy. Oh, you're trying to reach out and tickle that one. Oh dear. Jude, uh, it's it's worm porn. We're city workers, Jude. Come on. It's worm. Oh, there he is, right there. He's like construction. There he is, right there. Yeah. He's with the worms. He's in a good space because I think he likes to live in the dirt. Wormy Kruger meets the inside of your stomach or something. It's it's a sadistic, parasitic a liver, horror right? story. He, these are like a lot of. Like, oh, look at all the worms. Stars. The worm congregation. Man, if I was a worm, I'd want to hang out with you guys. Oh, look, Don, one of your Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs>